I'm back with another unboxing for a popular privacy tool that I often see recommended or talked about, but honestly, I haven't seen a whole lot of firsthand experiences with it, and that is the Nitro Key. So if you're interested in the Nitro Key, stick around and we're gonna talk all about it in this video, plus an unboxing. I actually have a Nitro Key affiliate link. So if you watch this video and you think, hey, that sounds kind of nifty, I think I might wanna try one for myself, then you can support us by using that link to buy your own Nitro Key. Or you can buy any other product on their store, like pre-flashed graphene phones, cubes, laptops, network attached storage devices, OpenSense firewalls, and more. Now, to be honest, you can, of course, flash all of these yourself. Nothing is to stop you from going out and buying your own laptop and putting cubes on it, or your own Pixel and putting a custom OS on it. And honestly, I would encourage you to do that if you are comfortable doing so, you have the skills, and you have a little bit of time on your hands. It's the best way to ensure that you're getting an actually secure, properly done device, and you're not trusting anyone else not to do anything malicious with it. That said, I totally understand. Some people are not comfortable doing it. Maybe you don't have that level of tech savvy yet, even though for some of these things, it's actually super, super easy. Or maybe you're in my boat where you are simply tired of dealing with the headache and you are totally willing to pay a markup for the convenience, I am totally looking at you, Cubes. If so, the Nitro Key has some options for you on that front. So as usual, let's start by talking about what is a Nitro Key. A Nitro Key is an open source hardware security token, kind of like a YubiKey or a Solo Key, except the YubiKey is not open source. And the Solo Key, I actually also did an unboxing for that you can go watch here. I haven't decided where I'm going to put the thing yet. Unlike the other open source option, the solo key, the Nitro key is a lot more robust. It's capable of things like using PGP keys, storing data and firmware updates, and much more. Now, really quick, the firmware updates might sound like a good idea initially, but they're actually kind of a double-edged sword. Because on the one hand, updates are really cool. Those are really nice. On the other hand, updates also theoretically introduce the possibility for some sort of supply chain attack or malicious update being pushed out. So that's why a lot of the mainstream keys like the YubiKey and I think the Google Titan don't actually offer updates. It's actually for your benefit for security. And I know this isn't about those particular products, but they do actually have a record of giving you a free key if there's some sort of major vulnerability found. Nitro Key wouldn't need to offer you a free replacement because they can simply push out an update. Perusing through their blog, it looks like they don't push out firmware updates very often. So personally, I feel good knowing that they're not abusing this by constantly pushing out updates. It should be relatively easy to go straight to their website and see, hey, we're pushing out an update for this reason. It's also worth noting that they were audited by Cure53, which is a company who has done a lot of security audits, but that was all the way back in 2015. And especially now that they've got a new Nitro key rolling out, I would like to see them do a revised audit sometime here soon. I feel like that's kind of getting into review territory, so I'll save all that for the end. Now, I went ahead and purchased the Nitro Key 3A Mini, which at the time of this review does not offer any of the PGP or SMIME support or OTP or anything like that, but it does offer FIDO2, which is honestly the main thing I use my keys for. My keys are all kind of glorified solo keys, to be totally honest with you. These things are on the roadmap though and should be arriving soon. So I'm assuming they'll release an update when all those things are ready. Hey guys, future Nate here with a ton of updates because I recorded this video all the way back in February and then got super busy with things like travel, work, moving to a new apartment, the usual life stuff. So bear with me and I apologize for all the fixes that I'll need to be issuing in this video. So first up, the Nitro Key 3 actually has been updated to include almost all of the functionality that was promised. This ties into some additional updates later in the video, so I will elaborate more in a little bit, but for now, just know that everything I'm about to say about the 3 is a little bit outdated and that the 3 now more closely resembles the 2, which again, I will touch on here in a minute. My only two notes that I have prior to the actual unboxing is number one, shipping cost more than the actual key itself. That was completely insane, but that's probably what you European people deal with all the time because I've heard that international shipping is kind of a nightmare and I don't typically purchase things from outside the US, but Nitro Key's from Germany and yeah, shipping was crazy expensive. So I ended up spending a lot of money on this thing. I also remember asking a question on Twitter. I don't remember what the exact question was. And honestly, at this point, I'm not gonna go digging back months to go find it, but it was something simple. Like I was asking if the three would support a certain feature or something like that. And they did eventually reply, but it took a couple of weeks. And that was a little bit disappointing to see such a slow response time. Okay, with those notes out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the actual unboxing. Okay, so here's my workspace. I'm still adding more stickers to the new laptop and here, is my packaging. 
Um, yeah, all the way from Germany, German export up here, like it says. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop this guy open now. This thing has actually been sitting on my desk for weeks while I go ahead and uh, wait for, ooh, it came with a sticker. Yay, that'll go on the new computer. Um, this has been sitting on my desk for months, actually, while I go ahead and, uh... wow, okay, that's it. Very minimal. I like it, okay. Um, been sitting on my desk while I've been waiting for the new computer, which the last video was all about. Uh, okay, so yeah, I got this neat little sticker, which like I said, will probably be sticking on my laptop. And then uh, Nitro Key, Secure Your Digital Life, Getting Started, nitrokey.com slash start. And let's see, so they've got a little mini, which I got the A, because back when I ordered this, my computer had more A slots than C slots, otherwise I would have probably gotten a C or something if they offered it. Uh, it says Nitro Key 3A mini on it right there. That's pretty neat. And then I like, it comes with this little quick disconnect keychain guy. I don't know if you guys saw that. I just clip in the sides here and then it pops right apart. And I like that because one of the issues I have with my existing YubiKey over here that I don't think you guys can see on this video, but one of the issues I have is I don't need or want to remove it very often. But when I do, it is basically impossible. And so I like that I can very easily, I guess I'm supposed to take this little lanyard part and slide it through there. I hope I'm doing this right. I might be breaking this thing for all I know. And there it goes. Okay. Hmm. And that's it. And then I can just pull it right out and not really risk any damage to it. Okay. Um, I feel like that was a much shorter unboxing than the solo key video. The solo key video I felt, I feel took a lot longer. I think there was like a card and some other stuff. Oh, that's right. I had to assemble the solo key. That's why that one took longer. Yeah, this one just comes right out of the packaging ready to be used. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video put this sticker on my laptop and uh, plug this guy in and get going. And once again, through the magic of editing, it'll be about 10 seconds before I see you guys again. But for me, it's gonna be about a month. So we'll catch back up in a month. So I started off my review by going to the usual first thing that I'm curious about these days, which is KeyPass XE. And unfortunately, my 3A Mini did not support it. I'm not sure if that's because it didn't do OTP or maybe it's because it doesn't do challenge response. I think those are technically different things, but either way, for whatever reason, I know that my YubiKey does those things and the 3A Mini did not. Perhaps if I had gotten one of the second gen models, which does support OTP, then it might've worked with KeyPass. Okay, second update here. As part of one of the recent Nitro Key 3 updates, the 3 actually can work with KeyPass XC now. However, the ball is now in KeyPass XC's court to support that functionality. I have no idea how this works or why KeyPass XC needs to make additional changes on their side. That's a bit beyond my skill and expertise level, but the important thing is that the functionality is there and hopefully we can see that get implemented soon so we have another hardware token option for KeyPass XE. The 3 also does not work with the app. The latest stable release for the app was August 2020 with a few release candidate updates in 2021. It's unfortunate that they did not plan on this device being supported prior to the release. This seems like kind of an oversight. And I'm also a little curious about why the app gets so few updates. Is it intentional to mitigate the possibility of supply chain attacks or is it just a low priority that they don't really work on? A new firmware has definitely been released since I purchased this device, but I cannot seem to find any instructions on how to update it. Since my key doesn't work with the app, I can only assume that I'm out of luck until the app does get updated and becomes compatible with the key. Again, really unfortunate they did not take this kind of thing into account. All right, third update here, and this one is super stupid. At the time, I did not realize that there is a second Nitro Key app. 
From what I can tell, this new app will be the new app moving forward, but don't quote me on that. The documentation isn't exactly clear on that issue. At the moment, the new app only supports the three key while the old app continues to support the two. So if you plan to buy a two, for now you'll have to keep using the old app, which I showcase later in the video, and you may have to update to the new one at some point, possibly, I'm not sure. If you get the three, make sure you go and find the new app, which I will link in the show notes, since for some reason, Nitro Key does not have this app pinned on their GitHub page Page, but does have the old app pinned. So in other words, there is absolutely no f***ing indication that the three requires a different app. You're just supposed to magically suspect that and figure it out. It is pure luck that I figured it out thanks to that last correction I just did. We covered that story on Surveillance Report, which prompted me to dig deeper and figure out how to update the three, and that's how I found the new app. So Nitro Key really needs to do a better job of advertising this new app, at least for three users, because honestly, there's a good chance my three had more functionality than I originally thought when I recorded this video. I just didn't know how to update it. That said, all of the FIDO and web authorization and U2F functionality worked perfectly. I immediately began to add it to sites like Mastodon or Twitter, no issues whatsoever. And the little string that came with it made it super easy to remove it from my computer at night so that my cats wouldn't mess with it. Although to be fair, if I hadn't put the lanyard on, my cats wouldn't have messed with it in the first place. Still, it was really cool and I wish that I had one for my YubiKey to be honest. It's nice to be able to have a mini that's portable and small form factor, but also easily removable. I, I don't know, I just thought that was super cool and I loved it. And just for those wondering why my cats would mess with it, it's because at the time I was leaving my laptop in the bedroom to play like background noise. We've since moved over to a smartish TV. So yeah, but still, I just like to have that background noise and my cats like to mess with anything they can to get my attention because they're brats. After only a few days of testing, however, I realized that this video was on track to be really boring. It was basically just going to be a repeat of the solo key video with a few more negatives to report because at this time, all the 3A mini does is Fido and WebAuth. So not really a lot going on there. That was when I decided to reach out to Nitro Key to see if they would be willing to send me one of their second gen units that comes with some more features. I figured that this would serve several purposes. Number one, it would be a lot more interesting to you guys. Number two, it would showcase what Nitro Keys are actually capable of. The fact that they are more like an open source YubiKey and less like an overpriced solo key. And number three, because these are different models, I figured it would also give you the chance to see what the possibilities are and decide which model is right for you, if any of them. So updated disclaimer, Nitro Key did end up sending me a Nitro Storage 2 free of charge. This was a demo unit. I informed them as soon as I received it and I returned it within 45 days after that. I did not get to keep it. And they did actually tell me that if I kept it, they were going to charge me for it. So yeah. They did not pay me any additional money for the device or the review, and actually they didn't even say anything about the review. At no point did they put any kind of constraints on it or ask me to mention anything or anything like that. It was literally a 100%, hey, we would love to supply you with one. Here you go, try it out, send it back and publish your thoughts. And side note on that, they were actually super accommodating. Like once I received it, I let them know, hey, I just got it. And they straight up told me like, hey, if you need a little extra time to review it, let us know. Really friendly staff. So now that I had my hands on a mature, fully featured Nitro Key, let's see what these things are really capable of. Unfortunately, I did not actually film the unboxing of that. That was an oversight on my end. But my first impression was the quality of these units. They're plastic, but damn, are they quality. I was impressed with how rugged and tough it felt. Obviously, I didn't go out and put it through the ringer, like I didn't try to run it over with my car or something, but I feel pretty confident that this device would easily stand up to any average wear and tear, maybe even a little more than average. YubiKeys have like the metal on the outside and solo keys, like I mentioned in my video, have that cheap little rubber on it. I'm always a little scared to put those in my pocket and carry them around on my keychain, but this thing, I don't think it would have had any issues at all. Unfortunately, one of the first things I noticed is that the string that came with my mini is not standard for all devices. And I did confirm that with their support team. So if you buy a non mini model, be sure to either request one or purchase a lanyard to keep on your keychain because that will not come with it. That was only for the minis. So once again, the first thing I did was to download the app, which is required for the pro or storage models. The rest of them, you can get away without it, but you will need it for those in order to take full advantage of the functionality. Now the Nitro key was fine, but the app itself was kind of buggy. It hung a lot, it froze or slowed down, and it's also not very intuitive. I guess it's a little more so than the YubiKey app, but I mean, I don't know. I just, a lot of the things, I wasn't really sure what they did until I started digging around and figuring it out. 
It's not one of those things you can just look at it and immediately understand what everything does. At least not in my opinion. One thing I should have realized is that if you open the storage in the file explorer first, there is documentation in there and that actually helps a lot. So if you get a storage model or a pro model, be sure to open the device in the file explorer first in order to access that documentation. Then just read it, follow it along. Understand how to update, configure various settings, etc. It should all be in there. Now, in my personal opinion, the number of slots was pretty good. There are 15 OTP slots, 3H OTP slots, and 16 password slots. This will not be enough for most people to replace all of your accounts, especially if you have unique passwords on all of your accounts, which you should. However, it is probably enough for the most sensitive and commonly used accounts, which I think is probably the point. In other words, this device can easily replace your password manager when you're traveling. If you put just your traveling work accounts on there or just like your most critical bank accounts and storage accounts and email accounts, things like that, this is probably gonna do perfect for you. Now, I will say as far as using it as a password manager, it did not let me copy the username very easily. It was easy to copy the password and the TOTP, which I suppose are probably the important things, but it'd be nice if I could just copy and paste everything super easily. That's one of the things I like about using a password manager in general is I never really have to type anything. I just copy and paste. It's also important to notice that slots were not able to share names. So for example, if you're like me and you have two Mastodon accounts, I have one for the new oil and one for myself, my personal stuff. I cannot just name them both Mastodon. I have to give them different names. The slots will not understand the difference unless I do that. One of the features of a Nitro key is that it comes with encrypted and hidden storage. And these were actually super cool. But once again, check the documentation on how to set these up. Opening a hidden drive requires you to close out the encrypted drive. So you cannot use them both at the same time. And the site actually recommends that you don't use them both at all. The hidden drive is hidden. So the encrypted drive may not recognize that it's even there and may accidentally overwrite it. I didn't have any issues like that when I was testing this out, but this was also like a short test. This was not a long-term daily usage, and I could definitely see that being an issue if I use it long-term. But yeah, they're fairly user-friendly and super easy once you get the hang of them. So just kind of spend some time figuring that out. I also think it's really cool that the hidden drive comes with a separate password for extra protection. So if you wanted to go ahead and gamble, you could have the regular encrypted drive with one password. And then if you're ever forced to unlock that for some reason, see, here's my encrypted drive, here's all the files in there. And then here's the hidden drive with a completely different password. Although it should be noted, and every service so far I found that offers this whole like hidden drive thing, they do point this out. A hidden drive will not necessarily hide you from forensics. So if you have a really high threat model, like a government or something like that, probably hidden drives are not gonna be good enough to protect you. But if you're just using it for simple things and you just want the average person to leave you alone, like, I don't know, let's say you got a really inquisitive roommate who's always looking over your shoulders. The hidden drive won't show up, they won't see it, they won't ask you about it, problem solved. Although you should probably get a better roommate. That's really crappy. You also have to format the hidden drive on first use. So again, this comes back to the whole thing where it's a little bit confusing to figure out how to use this thing at first glance. It's really not. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually super easy. But I definitely found myself frequently going, oh man, I hope I don't break this thing or I hope I don't overwrite something. Everything went fine. But yeah, I would definitely figure out all the functionality, test it out and get the hang of it before you start actually putting sensitive stuff on there because it certainly feels like it's really easy to mess it up. I don't know if it is, but it certainly felt like I was gonna completely mess it up at any given moment. So yeah, test it, play with it, figure it out, and then start actually putting stuff on. Now, the particular model that I have did not do FIDO, WebAuth, KeyPass XE, or Windows Hello. And that's really unfortunate, but when I looked closer at it, it doesn't say that it does those things. So I actually shouldn't have been surprised. That said, I think it would probably work with Windows Hello if I had gotten a different model that supports that kind of thing. I'm pretty sure the solo key is supposed to work with Windows Hello. My computer is just locked down and finicky and doesn't want to do that for some reason. Firmware updates were especially tricky, so definitely be sure to read the documentation very well on that. I actually almost brick the device by just diving in headfirst without asking questions. There's a very specific order you have to do things in and a certain procedure. Once I had tested all this stuff out, it was time to return it. And of course, like any good data privacy enthusiast, I wanted to erase everything before sending it back. And fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, depending on how you view it, erasing the data to return it was super easy. It was literally like one click. It was incredibly intuitive. So that was probably the easiest part out of everything I tested. So much so that I did it a couple times just to make sure I did it right. Overall, the Nitro key felt way more feature rich than the YubiKey. It, it may not be, to be honest. I really haven't dove into everything that my YubiKey is capable of, but 
I didn't do that with the Nitro key either, to be honest. I didn't dive into any of the sysadmin type stuff that it can do, which requires the HSM model, which I did not get. I know the YubiKey is capable of all this stuff too, but I don't know. I, I pretty much only use my YubiKey for like two factor and key pass and Nitro key did all of those things too. Plus again, the storage and the fact that it stores the passwords and stuff on the key. I don't know, again, it felt way more feature rich than the YubiKey. Maybe it's not, but it certainly felt that way. If you are considering a hardware key, which I really think everyone should because they're actually super easy and not as challenging as they seem, and you don't need the challenge response or biometrics that certain YubiKeys offer, then I think the Nitro key is definitely worth consideration. I really liked it a lot and I will be keeping a very close eye on it to see when my Nitro key 3 is capable of supporting more of these advanced features so that I can use some of them. Again, the team that I spoke to was awesome and supportive. Again, they did not put any constraints on this or ask me to say anything specific. They were really friendly, really communicative and super eager to contribute. They actually even paid for the return shipping. They sent me a label that I just had to print out and stick on the envelope and send it back. So this whole thing really cost me nothing, even the return shipping, which I was totally expecting to pay. They've definitely won my loyalty as a customer. I like them. I'm, you know, happy I did some business with them and I will probably be buying some more products from them in the future, like a Cube's laptop, because again, I am so tired of fighting with that on my own. All that to say, if you like what you saw here and you want to support what at least to me seems like a good company and they make a good product, definitely go check them out. And again, remember, we do have an affiliate link with them. And for those of you who are new here, I don't add services just because they have an affiliate link. I add a service. And then if they happen to have an affiliate link, I take advantage of that. But I never let that be a deciding factor in my decisions. I was genuinely impressed with the Nitro key. I was impressed with the company. I was impressed with the service and the communication. I was impressed with the product itself. God, it felt so sturdy. Like seriously, at one point I even went out and showed it to my wife and I'm like, check out how tough this thing is. And she's like, wow, this feels so like sturdy and well-built and yeah, it, it was awesome. I will certainly be buying more products from them in the future. And again, if you want to support us, you can do that too. They offer things like pre-flash graphene phones. Although for the record, graphene has the web installer now, which I'm told makes it virtually impossible to screw up flashing it. They also offer firewalls. They offer laptops. They offer stickers, notepads, all kinds of training stuff. I think they have laptop camera covers, all kinds of things. So if you want to support the channel and get a little something in return, definitely check them out because I was really impressed with them as a company and their product. I'm sorry I keep saying that over and over again. It's late when I'm recording this and I'm very tired. So there you have it. That is another hardware key that's very popular in the privacy community. And hopefully I have been able to give you some insight into that key, because again, I don't see a lot of actual hands-on reviews from this kind of stuff, but I was really impressed with it. I've still been using the 3A Mini for the last however long it's been since I started recording this video and I have nothing bad to report about it. I'm using it mostly for two-factor on my Windows device for WebAuth and Fido, and it's been running strong. It's nice and low profile, fits right in the side, no complaints whatsoever. I'm actually gonna go ahead and check for updates after recording this video and see if hopefully I've got some more functionality. So thank you guys for watching. And if there's any other products like this that get a lot of mention in the privacy community, but nobody really has a lot of hands-on experience, let me know. I would love to check them out. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.